Hey, what's up guys? Today I'll be showcasing the 20 most customizable cars in GTA 5 as of 2023. For each car, I'm gonna talk a little bit about it and also show the number of unique modifications that you can apply to it. Now, really quickly before we get started, I wanna make a quick note that this video will not be featuring any lowrider cars. Although I will be featuring some Benny's cars, I feel like lowriders in themselves are kind of a totally different breed and that a majority of their customization options are for the interior rather than the exterior. And a lot of those customization options are just kind of copied over from car to car. However, they are all still great cars that are definitely worth checking out if you do like lowriders. And if I get the time, I do plan on making a separate video covering the most modifiable ones. Anyways, with that said, let's get into the cars. All right, guys. So in 20th place here, we have the Dinka RT3000. This is one of the more iconic and fun cars, in my opinion, from the LS Tuners DLC. And obviously with that, this car has a ton of customization. There's a lot of weird modifications for the exterior of the car, like panel deletes and things like that which kind of seem out of place but overall considering the rest of the stuff you can do to this thing it is a really awesome and really well modifiable car lots of liveries you can do some fast and furious builds overall a great one to modify and next up we have the Karen Fudo GTX uh, another very iconic car obviously from the LS Tuners DLC obviously this is the car that you can turn into the initial DA86 if you want to do that but in addition to that opportunity you have plenty of other ways that you can personalize this car from unique Japanese style exhaust from a bunch of different liveries to do classic authentic kind of drift builds and things like that to a bunch of other visual stuff to pretty much turn it into whatever you could possibly want and especially for drifting this car is amazing so you can definitely do a nice build for that next up we have the grotty brioso 300 wide body this was a kind of underrated benny's car in my opinion that dropped with the criminal enterprises dlc another super modifiable car you can kind of turn this thing into like a hill climb or rally style track weapon this thing is absolutely amazing with all the liveries and really interesting details in terms of the interior as well as the engine you can change up a lot of the engine models which is cool there's plenty of liveries to kind of add to that track aesthetic and a lot of other parts to really personalize this and make it your own and next up we have the Karen Sultan RS a very well-known icon for a lot of JDM fanboys obviously this car is based off of a Lexus IS 300 or Toyota Altezza which is awesome uh, as you guys can see here in the footage obviously this is a uh, Fast and Furious style build from the Tokyo Drift movie but again in addition to to that kind of build you can do plenty of other things with this car lots of modifications on the interior with all the gauges and you know the standard level of benny's customization but also plenty of room to add things elsewhere on the car too and next up we have the fister growler which was a pretty underrated car in my opinion to drop with the ls tuners dlc fairly expensive car but this does offer a lot in terms of obviously modifications as well as uh, just generally being very fun to drive now one thing about this car is that there's not a ton you could do to change the exterior of the car in my opinion there's a lot of like smaller details like hoods and lips and things like that but nothing super drastic there are a really nice selection of liveries as well that you can choose from so yeah you can really make this thing look clean or you can go for more track aesthetic kind of build either way this car is pretty fun to modify and next up we have the karen previon this is one of my personal favorite cars mainly because i own a lexus sc in real life so it's nice to have a, a version of this in gta 5 to play with although my main gripe with this car is that it's kind of hard to make look good although there are a ton of modifications and and really a lot of options to make this your own car in my opinion especially the wheel fitment and some of the parts that were added to this car just make it look very awkward and as i said uh before with the wheel fitment it's hard to make this thing look good the the fitment's never quite right but despite that still a really fun car to check out and modify and next up of course we have an icon the anis elegy retro custom this was probably the most popular benny's vehicle that currently exists in the game especially for a lot of jdm fanboys there's plenty of room for you guys to make this whatever kind of build that you want you can go for uh, an authentic kind of track build as i've gone with with the uh, calsonic r32 aesthetic but again lots of other options for you to personalize it and make it your own lots of authentic stuff especially with the exterior of the car lots of cool spoiler options and liveries and things like that definitely an amazing car that's really well rounded and next up we have a, another pretty iconic car the anis zr 350 the mazda rx7 that was obviously added with the ls tuners dlc another pretty nice car in my opinion it's a little bit disappointing on the customization side i wish it offered more because as you guys know the rx7 is one of the most heavily modified cars in real life however there still is quite a lot of authentic modifications like a lot of re amemia parts which is great a lot of liveries and things like that you just need to kind of take the time to unlock them but still really really iconic and really personalizable car which is great next up we have the anis remus again a very popular car in the game probably on the same level as the elegy retro custom obviously this car is more tailored to those drift 
characters, but still you can do a lot to this car to make it your own. Obviously with a lot of the else tuners cars, you have a lot of engine customization and a lot of interior customization as well. But with this car, especially you have a lot of options to make it kind of drift style, or you can keep it nice and clean. Lots of liveries to kind of tailor it to your own style of build. Uh, and yeah, definitely a really fun car that's worth drifting, but also you can match that drift aesthetic as well with all of the modifications that are available for it. Next up, we have the Dinka Kanjo SJ, easily one of my most favorite cars in the game now. This car, I really wasn't expecting to offer that much customization, but this thing is actually really nice. And there's a lot of ways in which you can personalize this. Obviously, you guys can see my build. I went for kind of a spoon aesthetic with that livery with the iconic blue and yellow paint scheme. But obviously, there's a ton of other modifications and things like that for you to personalize it and make it your own. You can do a Fast and Furious build if you want to check that out. I've done one already for the Civic in the first Fast and Furious movie. But again, plenty of other options for you to make this your own. And you can also stance it in your interaction menu too. Next up, we have the Ubermach Cypher. This wasn't my personal favorite car from the Los Santos Tuners update. I personally wish Rockstar could have done a little bit more in terms of customization that better fit this car. I feel like some of this stuff is, is kind of small to be honest. Although the number of modifications is great, I feel like they are fairly small modifications that you can do like things for the grill or hood pins or can arts. Kind of small things, nothing really drastic you can do to the exterior of the car to kind of make it your own. Nothing super crazy, but still quite a lot. Um, there's a, especially a lot of liveries as well that you can play with. So uh, lots of room to customize, but uh, it's better off kind of just keeping this thing clean because there's nothing super drastic you can do. Next up, we have the Dinka Jester RR. Originally, I wasn't a huge fan of this car, but uh, since I've driven the car more, since I've drifted the car because it's an amazing drift car, and since I've kind of learned to use this car more, uh, I've really started to appreciate a lot of uh, everything about this car, really, uh, including the modifications. Obviously, it's got the same number of modifications as the Cypher and about the same level of, you know, customization. There's a lot more liveries that I really like that fit this car a lot better than the Cypher, but again, there are quite a few modifications that are kind of small things in relation to some of the other cars we've seen. Next up, we have the Anas Euros, and this is kind of a similar story to both the Cypher and the Dinka Jester RR in that there's a lot of customization options, but a lot of those are for fairly small things. I really wish Rockstar had given a lot more options for things like the bumpers and the spoiler and just generally exterior modifications. I feel like this car really would have benefited from that. Uh, however, there's still quite a few liveries that you can make uh, your own kind of build out of. Lots of Fast and Furious builds and really cool like JDM inspired liveries as well. So really great car to personalize. It just will take a little bit of work to make it look nice. Next up, we have the Emperor Vector, which is another car that originally I didn't take too kindly to, but since I've taken the time to modify it more, especially obviously for this video, I've really learned to appreciate this thing. Lots of unique uh, bumper options, especially there's room to make this car look like a Nissan Altima in the front or like a Scion FRS, really interesting bumper options. But despite those kind of weird options there, the rest of the car gives you a lot of opportunities to really make it your own in terms of the liveries and the skirts and the interior and everything like that. Really awesome car with plenty of room for a lot of different styles of builds. And next up, we have the Declasse Yosemite Rancher. In my opinion, a pretty underrated Benny's car that I'm sure if you're not super into the off-road class in this game, you probably forgot about. I know I completely forgot about this thing and then I remembered that, oh my god, that you can actually upgrade this thing in Benny's. And after going through it and kind of making my own build with it, I was really super impressed with the amount of modifications offered by this car. There's so much in terms of exterior modifications to interior modifications kind of on the same level as lowriders, which is great. Although it isn't a lowrider, so there's not a lot of things that are recycled. There's a lot that really makes this car unique in comparison to other cars in the game, which is why I love it so much. And I highly recommend that you guys buy this thing. And next up, we have a pretty new addition to the list of most modifiable cars, the Obey 10F Widebody. I'm a huge fan of this car, mainly because it's such an amazing drift car, but obviously, as you guys can see here too, it's got a bunch of modification options to make into your own personal build. Lots of really cool aesthetic modifications to make it look super aggressive, like the exposed rear mount turbos, which is awesome. One major complaint that I have about this car though, is that uh, a lot of the aesthetic modifications, like the lips and spoilers and things like that, they're really just kind of copied over and it's just a different texture really with the forged carbon. But beyond that, there are quite a few options to make this thing your own build. And for that reason, I really like the car. Next up, we have the Obey Tailgater S. Again, like we saw with some other tuners DLC cars, probably not a really well-known car from the update. But despite that fact, there's obviously a lot of room to kind of make this car your own. In my opinion, I really wish that there were additional options, especially with the bumpers. I'm really not a fan of the way the front bumper looks. And if there are more options to change that, that would have been great. Despite that though, the rest of the car offers amazing customization throughout the engine, as well as
as the interior, which I like especially being able to color the interior and make it nice and clean, I thought that was a really nice touch. And in addition to that, there's a lot of ways you can personalize this thing and make it your own. And next up, we have a pretty well-known icon, again, from the Los Angeles Tuners update, the Karen Calico GTF. And this thing offers so much in terms of pretty much any type of build that you could possibly think of, you can execute on that with this car. You can make it a rally style build like I've done in this video. You can make it like a, a early 90s or like an early 2000s tuner spec car. You can make a full on race car. You could do pretty much anything you could possibly think of with this car, which is why I love it so much. Lots of liveries, lots of interior customization, lots of ways to kind of make it your own. I know I've said that a lot, but this car especially, uh, being one of the most modifiable cars in the game, I love it so much. And next up, we have the Ubermach Sentinel Classic Wide Body, probably the most recent addition to this list, probably one of my more favorite cars to come out as of recent. This car, although it isn't the best in terms of performance, as you guys can see here, this thing offers an absolute ton of customization, both on the interior and the exterior as well. One thing I personally love about this car is, obviously the wide body makes it look super aggressive, but there's so many options to kind of build upon the look that's added by the wide body. You can do plenty of different liveries, you can change up the skirts and the bumpers to kind of fit whatever aesthetic that you're looking for. And in my opinion, just the amount of diversity with this car is really what sets it apart and makes it one of my personal favorites. And obviously that leaves first place. And here we have the Vapid Dominator ASP. This is the official most modifiable car here in GTA 5. And obviously it's pretty easy to tell by taking this thing to any mod shop. This thing offers an insane amount of customization. What I especially like about this car is that it's got so much room to modify in the engine bay specifically. Obviously it's got the standard interior customization and visual upgrades that are offered by a lot of the other tuner vehicles, but you can also match that up with a really, really detailed and really fleshed out engine model as well. In addition to that, this car is an awesome car to drive, so you have no reason to not buy this thing. Definitely go and give it a look. And that will wrap up my list of the 20 most customizable cars in GTA 5 as of 2023. This video took an absolute ton of work to go in and buy and then manually tabulate the number of modifications for each of these cars. So I really hope it paid off and showed you guys some good cars that are worth checking out if you want to personalize them and make them your own. Anyways, guys, I'm going to leave it there. If you like what you see, feel free to drop a like on this video, leave any feedback you might have in the comments, and also consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see more content like this in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.